Now, there's a special case of a V coat where I could have a quarter wave and a quarter wave. So if this is the mag fluoride, then this one here might be an index of about 1.7, which is kind of close to aluminum oxide. So in that case, a quarter wave and a quarter wave will get me the V coat, and its curve will look similar to the other ones. Now, here's kind of an important thing, that if I took that V coat and stopped at the end of the first layer, and then I put a half wave of high index on that, what do we know about a half wave? It's like it's not there at that one wavelength. So at the design wavelength, that and then this last layer, it's still going to be as low as the V-coat. But this has a wonderful effect of flattening out the coating. So it's no longer V-coat. It's a broad band. And this triple air coating, the patent was applied for by Gefkin in 1940, and I guess issued in 42 or whatever. So this is what's called the achromatizing layer. It gets rid of the color, achromatizing. So that is the basis of broadband anti-reflection coatings. Now, this would be what happens at the red end of the spectrum in that the first layer is short of a quarter wave, the second layer is short of a half wave, and the third layer is a short quarter wave. And as it turns out, this is staying fairly close in here. And then at the blue end of the spectrum, this is too long and that's too long and that's too long but it still stays over here. 